Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we are now seeing PlayStation developers for some odd reason celebrating. We're now seeing some big drama coming over here for the fallback of a lot of games that are just not making their way on through. We have a lot of other kind of cool games on the way too as well for Sega, like a lot, just a lot of big stuff when it comes to the PlayStation ecosystem. Mainly because right now, if you guys missed it, there is a huge, huge cancellation when it came to one of the most probably sought after PlayStation games, at least people are known of as of right now with leaks and rumors. And well, I personally am pretty sad apparently the developers are now celebrating the fact that they are finally able to well be done with this apparently horrible project now some folks are saying they liked it and all that but if the project is getting canceled well apparently there is something wrong with it at the end of the day so we're gonna go talk about this talk about the drama and everything else in between and of course the big kind of big topic of this playstation even meant to still be on the live service game so we're gonna go talk about that all throughout this video so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on we have the twitter and twitch room down below we've also have the brand new 500 giveaway or playstation 5 slim giveaway too as well so make sure you guys enter on that one and of course give me your thoughts and comments all down below so in case you guys missed it really quick recap is that the last of us online has now been officially canceled this game has been rumored has been talked about and also kind of publicly already talked about too as well from people's linkedin accounts and some of the executives over at the studios working on this like Naughty Dog themselves have actually brought this on up and done a little bit of a press release and talked about the game and gave some concepts and everything else and with this it's actually weird because now they the devs now are apparently celebrating the end of this game you heard that correctly apparently developers are well, like being like thank god we're finally done so the last of us online developers celebrate their canceled game it's absolutely been the highlight of my career now you know developers are now looking back and what have could have been. So it's an interesting concept because if you guys have missed it and we kind of have been seeing more information and kind of more discourse about it is that this game company, it could have worked. Like if they really wanted to go like do a huge pivot in what they make and how they make it, they could have actually made this game work. Whether it's more funding for employees or whether it's you know just trying to go and say whatever else, go balls deep into it <laughs> the, the, the usual youtube swear and let's go and like see if we could actually make this game work and they at the end of the day did a big press release they decided not to and it's kind of been sad news to go and see in the overall playstation ecosystem but we've had a few like a few different types of conversations over here let's say for like tom henderson who's trying to go and highlight and talk about this fact too with the initial tweet saying so naughty dog canceled last of us factions because it would have required their entire studios to support it Fair enough, but shouldn't they just hire more people? And that's what I was kind of saying myself. Like, I'll be honest, I was admitting, I'm like, hey, I probably would just want to go and just get more money from PlayStation. I know it's kind of hard to always just ask your big boss, we want more money, we want more money. But this is at least like a somewhat tangible product with a somewhat also tangible result. So... Tom's kind of response and kind of give a little bit more of an insight on this one. Think about the economics at a base level. If the whole studio needed to work on The Last of Us multiplayer, that's 400 employees. If the average salary is 50K, which is definitely not for developers, that's 20 mil a year in salary alone. Is The Last of Us multiplayer going to sell 250,000 battle passes a quarter at $20 each over multiple years to cover that cost basis? I really do doubt it, and they probably did too. Which is kind of a big thing to note because games like Fortnite, League of Legends, Overwatch, uh, they actually could and probably probably do sell a lot more than 250,000 battle passes or at least dabble into other various outside revenue sources such as skins or whatever because I think League of Legends they'll do both they have battle passes and skins or same with Overwatch they'll do a battle pass too as well but they also have things like skins too to be sold for individual price purchasing too and they also obviously have like Activision they help support it and things like now at this point Call of Duty and like you know Xbox to also subsidize it too as well so it's kind of a big thing to know is that it just would be a very costly experience live service unless you're going gung-ho on it is a little bit on the rough side like something like a Fortnite makes a lot of money because it has such a big player base that is buying skins and is buying battle passes so they can keep on changing stuff and working on stuff and also have money to go and spare let alone all souls with the epic game engine too which also can subsidize other various things because there's also like a little bit of a cost to point saying hey we go and we make Fortnite and we kind of use that time to also develop and make Unreal Engine 5 better. So their companies want to use it too as well. But right now with all this one, it kind of makes a lot of sense why it got canceled. It just costs a lot of money. It's not a proven like basically quality. And as of right this second, a lot of folks are just concerned on what could be. But funny enough, that's why I think a lot of the people working on it seem to be pretty happy. So following the, light, uh, the Last of Us Online's cancellation earlier this week, current and former developers from Naughty Dog have now emerged to celebrate the mysterious multiplayer project. Studio Naughty Dog canceled its untitled multiplayer spinoff after nearly four years of work, claiming the project will require too many development resources and detract from its upcoming single-player projects. In a recent statement, the studio claimed its options were to become a solely live-service game studio, 
or continue pushing out games such as Uncharted and The Last of Us, which itself had an unexpectedly greatly multiplayer mode in factions. So once again, like I think they could have made it work, and I do think my kind of running fan theory is they're just going to go put this in Last of Us Part 3. Like They have the worth, they have the concept, and they could probably go and also then justify it. So they have 400 people working on the entire game, but let's say 50 of them are doing the multiplayer aspect. That's already kind of been fleshed out, worked on, and can kind of, kind of pick up development and make it seem a little bit nicer at the end of the day. And I think that's how it's going to go. And if I had to pick, that's what's going to go and happen. At the same time, I would prefer them keep on staying in the single player, at least from studios that have been proven. Maybe give these fun multiplayer projects to a separate studio, maybe have a bigger studio like Naughty Dog, maybe look over it. That'd be maybe a good alternative where PlayStation maybe drops 100, like, you know, 100 employees. They go and want to throw like a few hundred million dollars into separate like game expansions and maybe they may have something like a Naughty Dog, maybe either allow them to use their IP or as well maybe oversee the project. But they have a chance to go and say over here, saying technical designer Nathaniel Ferguson uh, said, working on the game has absolutely been the highlight of my career. It will always be a very special project for me. And a social media post, a sad day, but very bright horizons ahead for sure. He continues. Game designer Carl Morley teased that he had more fun playing this game than any other multiplayer game before and since. A tantalizing tease for a game that we'll never get to play. So it seemed like they were excited, like they were happy. It seemed like the studio was kind of rolling with it. But it might be one of those just really big, big corporate decisions where they decide at the end of the day, hey, we just can't make it happen. Hey, we just can't make it work. And this is not what our studio is meant to be before. It's never easy to have a game canceled. But I'm so proud of my studio for everything we accomplished on this project. Dialogue director Kat McKinley writes on social media. Big shout out to my combat QA and dialogue teams. Seeing any game against canned is a shame, especially when it's possible follow up is something unique as factions, which actually in theory, like we'll never know that alternate reality where they say, sure, we make this game. And what if it's like a huge game that everyone loves? Now, probably not because I think these games don't have as much staying power. It'd be a fun maybe for a few weeks and you kind of go from there. But at the end of the day, I do appreciate it. And they go and say like, overall, like this game seemed like it was a cool experience. I think it looked like a game I probably would have liked and enjoyed at the end of the day. But once again, dropping like $20 million, having a chance to even recover the battle pass cost. Like I understand it could be a rough problem. Now, at the same exact time, I still think if they would have been a game like a Daisy or Escape from Tarkov, Looter Shooter, you get to progress through your weapon systems and all of that, and you kind of utilize like a cool shrubbery, you get to be hidden, you get to be like very stealthy, third party, almost think like, uh, I'm trying to think a Gears game, like a good old Gears game from back in the day. I probably would have liked that a lot. Like, I think that would have been a big win, at least in my opinion. But you can't always be, well, happy with that. Because a lot of folks do don't forget, we've been seeing a lot of drama when it comes to live service regardless. Like, live live service is a cool idea in theory, but basically even Sony themselves might have been taking over forcefully on Bungie and Destiny 2 because they basically never made enough money to go, well, make it all happen, which does make me a little bit sad at the end of the day. So I mean, they already bought it, so it makes sense on why they're okay just sitting there for the $3.6 million. Like, they want to see what happens. They want to let everything go and cook. But in the part two of this, like, if they're not cooking enough, you got to go get another chef in the kitchen. And that's what kind of, I think, the big issue for this may have been for the Last of Us multiplayer. Or maybe Sony was like, we need to make a lot of money. Can you make a lot of money? And then if they can't guarantee it, well, then they're going to be like, well, stick with what we got to go do. Like, stick with your single player games and go from there. Because you don't want to have, you don't want to like lose ownership. Like, if you're a big develop, like, say, like you're a director for a lot of these types of projects, you want to go and maintain that. That keeps like your cushy payroll, that keeps your good money. And that's what kind of matters at the end of the day. I don't know. It's in my opinion. So it's kind of sad to go and see that the devs are happy, but it makes sense on why they did it. It was out a few other cool games too, as well. Same up over here from Alex Kidd, Afterburner, Crazy Taxi, House of Dead, Outrun, Shinobi, Streets of Rage, and Super Monkey Ball are now actually now coming over once again for brand new trademarks from Sega. Now, I think Super Monkey Ball is a very closeted game that I think always deserves a little bit more love and attention, so I'm very happy to go and see that at the end of the day too as well. And also, last but not least, a bit of a quick interesting Kojima time. Now, as you guys know, Kojima's made some pretty cool games uh, when it comes to well, everything, but more recently, Death Stranding, Death Stranding 2, and some of their other brand new IPs. And he had a pretty big talk about the fact of how he wants to stay independent for pretty much the rest as he possibly can, and sometimes seeing news like that in the gaming industry is very, very nice to go and see. Mainly on the idea that at the end of the day, you still have that freedom for your own studio. You don't want to get bought out by PlayStation or Xbox, and they don't necessarily have to force you under these really bad revenue or other distinctions, and kind of gives you the freedom for your own game to work on it as long as you think you have to, and as well be able to go do whatever you have to do as well. And that's kind of been leading to issues right now with Bungie when it comes to them potentially getting taken over, Naughty Dog maybe not having the amount of freedom that they want to go do for their game, and everything else in between. So give me your thoughts and comments on all this type of stuff down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notification 
notifications on. We also have the $500 giveaway, so make sure you guys check out the Twitter and the tweet itself. And I just appreciate you guys all so much for watching here in the first place.